history of various types of discrimination go deep back into ages. People are clever enough to come up with inventions like smartwatches, artificial hearts, driveless cars, and a lot of useful things. But sometimes, people are not clever enough to stop discriminating each other. Religion, political views, gender, nationality, place of birth, and other types of discrimination. I think that we have to stop it. I think that we have to bring some change into this world. And one type of discrimination I want to talk about today is discrimination against non-native English-speaking teachers. About 80 to 90 percent of job advertisements on big English language teaching websites are for native English speaking teachers only, not the word only. At the same time, about 80 to 90 percent of English language teachers are non natives. To understand that it is a case of discrimination, I think we have first to understand what is a native speaker of English. So I have some definitions here from, from dictionaries. So native speaker, who is a native speaker? Uh, dictionaries, uh, Cambridge Dictionary says that a native speaker is someone who has spoken a particular language since they were a baby rather than having learned it as a child or adult. So, to be called a native speaker, you have to be exposed to the language from your childhood. Collins Dictionary says a person having a special native language is a person called a native speaker. And then Mac Macmillan says someone who has learned a particular language from, that, from the time they began to speak. Well, I understand uh, that dictionaries have to give some kind of definition, but I really think that the concept of a native and non-native uh, speaker's uh, dichotomy is outdated. Um, a couple of centuries ago, it was right, because national identity, ethnical identity, and language would coincide because people would not travel, we did not have planes and trains and cars and other means of transportation. But nowadays, people travel, they, they, they marry, they, they, you know, people, people love each other. They marry each other and very often, uh, when you see somebody whom you like, you do not ask for their passport. You just marry them, and then you have kids. So we have a lot of uh, mixed marriages and people moving from one country to another country. Well, sometimes uh, when people move to, to, to another country, their kids forget or do not speak their first language properly, but they speak the language of the country. My son is here in this room. I am Armenian, and my wife is Armenian. We've been living in Russia for 15 years now, and for the last five years, I have been speaking English to my three kids. So my son speaks English and Russian and Armenian. And what's his native language? If you say that it is Armenian, well, I, I could argue, because Armenian is not... Uh, his first language as far as the language competence is concerned, but it is Russian. So the second language is English and the third is Armenian. But if you take uh, into consideration ethnicity, you could say that it is 
Armenian. But ethnicity has to do with discrimination when it comes up to teaching. I mean, when you use the word native speaker of a language, I have nothing against it if you use it in a conversation, if you use it to tell about your origin and stuff, but, it, but, but when it comes to uh, teaching profession, uh, employers, recruiters, language school owners use it to discriminate against non-native English-speaking teachers. I mean, there is a huge demand for English language teachers in the world. And native speakers cannot meet the demand, and we need more and more and more non-native qualified teachers to do the job. But school owners and recruiters say that, um, that, that students and parents put a, a high value on somebody being a native speaker. But being a native speaker doesn't mean that you can be a good English language teacher, does it? You think about your first language or about your native language. Can you teach that language to somebody? Are you sure that you know grammar, that you know how the language works, that you know about syntax, that you know a lot of stuff about teaching, a lot about classroom management? Are you qualified as an English language teacher? But uh, this, this, this topic uh, has been discussed a lot in recent years, and I'm really proud to say that a lot of native speakers stand up for non-native English-speaking teachers. It is amazing that this discrimination against non-native speaking teachers happens mostly in the countries where English is not an official language, so somehow language school directors want to attract more clients uh, putting on their websites that we have English speakers in our school, or native English speakers, I mean, in our school. And very often, you have there just native speakers of English. Nice guys who want to travel. There is nothing, you know, bad about traveling. But, guys, teaching is a profession. Speaking is not. I own a chain of nine English language schools. But, anyway, I'm against this kind of discrimination because it has some consequences that we have to think about. There are more than two billion people speaking English to different extent these days and about 1.5 billion of them are English language learners. I mean if we pay more attention not to the fact of being a native speaker, but to the professional qualities of a teacher, I think everybody is going to benefit, both native speakers and non-native speakers. This world needs a real lingua franca, so that people can communicate, so that people can understand each other, so that there is more peace on this planet. How do we do it? How do we fight against this uh, fallacy? And it is fallacy, because what they say, what they say is that you have an accent, 
I met a lot of people who say, well, your English is pretty good, but you have an accent. My answer to those people is, you have an accent too. And when they say you have a foreign accent, I say you have a foreign accent too, because you live in a different country. But this misconception is rooted in human brains so deeply that a lot of people, a lot of non-natives and native professionals as well are going to quit teaching. They will get out of the profession because of this job inequality, I guess, and we have to do something about it. So being a native speaker is not about qualification. And when you see a job description saying that a native English language speaking teacher is needed, not the word only, actually you can go and get the job. Fighting is one thing. Hacking the system is another thing. I have something in my pocket. Actually, I have a certificate here, guys. And it says, this says to certify that Arayik Arzumanian is a native speaker of English. Yeah. Then it says, Arayik Arzumanian holds Sitan Guilds Level 3 Certificate in ESOL International Spoken Mastery C2 Level. To the best of my belief, C2 level, language, competence, description in European unions, common European framework of references, corresponds to the language competence of an educated native speaker. For the purpose, for the purpose of this certificate, the meaning of the native speaker term totally coincides with the meaning of the C2 level speaker term. It doesn't mean anything else. This certificate can be used only to apply for a job having the native English speaking teacher only or the like requirements. This certificate cannot be used in any way to discriminate anybody on the grounds of being a native speaker of English, having a native language competence, being a native of a particular nationality. Signed by me, Arai Karzumani. So, I have a certificate, and next time I see a job description, I promise, if I say it in our town, I promise, guys, I'm going to apply for it. And if somebody says you're not a native speaker, I'm producing the certificate, which means that now they have to prove that I'm not a native speaker. And to prove that I'm not a native speaker, recruiters have to discriminate against me in a more open way. They have to say that you're not a native speaker, that because you're Armenian or because you're Russian, and that is plain discrimination. So, my call for action is, we have a lot of teachers, associations on this planet. Why wouldn't you issue a certificate saying that Somebody who has C2 level of English, which is the highest level of competence, is a native speaker of English. Why, why wouldn't, wouldn't teachers associations issue certificates to hack the system? I think that if we try, if we work together, we can 
stop this practice of non-native English-speaking teachers' discrimination. And it is very important because more people, more teachers, then will get into the job, they will be more professional, and teachers also will be kind of forced to uh, work on their professional qualities. So, bringing more people into the field of English language teaching, and everybody is going to benefit. Natives, non-natives, students, teachers, humanity. Thank you very much.